everyone and welcome to today's video. I recently did a photo shoot with the Canon R5. I'm actually filming with it right now, so how does it look? Do I look good? <laughs> anyway, like I mentioned, I did a fun little photo shoot with my friend Meg. She actually needed me to grab some content for her for one of her Instagram posts. So we went out and did a fun little fall photo shoot. Anyway, the shooting experience with the R5 has been great. The eye and face autofocus of the R5 have been incredible. And I'll have to say from the shooting experience, it did feel pretty reliable. Long story short, while we were out on the shoot, the experience of using and handling the camera went great. Though I will say I did get some of the image stabilization wobbles in some video clips that I got. But with that out of the way, today we're actually going to be looking at the raw photos from the Canon R5. So I haven't seen them. I have not gone through them yet. I'm going to go ahead and download them right now so that we can get a first preview and impression of what I think about these images. Enough talking. Let's go ahead and download these files and take a look. So I've gone ahead and uploaded some photos and selected a few that we can try to edit. Let's go ahead and open up the first one. Now, a fun little pro tip for you. I actually like to set my Lightroom background to white because Instagram's default app UI is also white. So as I edit, I can compare my image to a pure absolute white just so I can get a better idea of how bright I need to make this image. All right, let's go ahead and make some edits. We'll just make a gentle S in the S curve. Nothing too crazy. Even doing that just adds a ton of contrast right there. So that's looking a lot better. Let's tweak some of the colors. And honestly, a lot of this you just kind of have to feel out. Now for orange, we don't want to do too much because that is actually where skin falls under. And your image will instantly fall apart if you push skin tones too much. So everything should stay relatively dialed back. I do think it's important to keep green in the image since there are some pine trees in the back. They're a little too brown to me, so I would actually push this over to the right. And as you can see in this little area, the color shift just seems a lot more healthy for a tree, if that makes sense. I do like to push this over just a bit. So something that I like to do is create a radial filter and the command is shift M for that. Um, and then put it right on top of the subject and then just make it pop a little bit more as it is the focal point of our image. See how it just pops a little bit more? Yeah. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is actually crop this to be a four by five, which is Instagram's dimensions. Another thing I like to do is put a gradient filter coming up from the bottom and drop the shadows and the blacks just a bit. Now doing this may not make a huge difference, but I feel like it motivates the eye to look into the center rather than looking down at the bottom as there's not much going on down here. All right, well, I'm happy where this is at. Let's go ahead and see the before and after. Now, right off the bat, this is quite a difference. It's a lot more vibrant and full, and the original photo just kind of looks washed out and flat, and it's just kind of ugly. <laughs> anyway, that is why we shoot in RAW and not JPEGs. If you can help it, do not shoot in JPEGs, as all of that information will be baked right into the image, and there won't be much that you can do to edit the image. We were able to pull out all of this color out of this image because we shot in RAW, so if you're not, please do. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste these settings over to the next image. We'll just throw that on there, see how this looks. That's actually not too bad. Yeah, I don't mind that. Um, let's go ahead and throw on a four x five crop. I'm liking that. Let's go ahead and look at the before and after. Yeah, looks good, big fan. Moving on to the next one. Here we have a typical product shot. Let's go ahead and paste, see how that looks. Um, it's better, but I don't like it. <laughs> uh, it's far too dark. Let's go ahead and fix that crop because that's gonna drive me crazy. We'll just make the product appear to be completely vertical. Now that's already bugging me right there. There is like a, this little scratch. So hit Q on your keyboard and you can open up the spot removal tool. 
it's hard to describe what color it was, but I just know this is off by a little bit. So a fun little trick that you can do is if you hold shift, option, command, H, lots of buttons. You can actually select a spot on your image and it will automatically pick that color and then you can just change it by dragging your cursor up or down, kind of like this. So, yeah, this feels better. Now, a fun little trick that I like to do is actually fix the sky. Now, there isn't enough dynamic range in the image to actually show a blue sky. And to be honest, it was overcast, so there wasn't actually a blue sky, but I like to give it this little effect that I'm about to show you to kind of give the illusion that it was a bright, sunny, full day. And I feel like doing this gives it a full range of color. So what we'll actually do is create this gradient filter just like we did, drop down to luminance, check, show luminance mask. We'll click on the range selector and drag it up from the left side until we feel like it's fully capturing the sky. And right about there feels good to me. Now I'll drop the temperature just to make it a little bit colder. And what we can actually do is even just plop in a color by going here. I'll aim for somewhere around this color. Now I usually go a lot higher just so that we can kind of see what color we're picking. And then I drop it down with the slider from that point. So somewhere around here, that feels good. Now again, this is kind of a subtle thing, but doing so gives the illusion that we're capturing more of the sky, and I do like showing pictures with the full range of color. So it's very subtle, but just something that I like to do. And I'm pretty happy where this is at. The only thing I'm gonna do now is just give the logo a little bit more pop of detail. So what I like to do is create a radial filter. And that's what we did. Just makes the logo pop a bit more. Great. I'm going to go ahead and paste my settings again and see how that looks. Ah, um, I mean, that's better, but too strong in my opinion. So let's back off with this color. I'm going to go ahead and do that little sky cheat that I was telling you about. The dominant color here is yellow and orange. So I think adding this blue is just going to be a nice little touch to kind of cool off the image as a lot of this is pretty warm. Great. Let's go ahead and fix this crop. And I like to still do those little gradient filters at the bottom. And her face is the subject, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop a radio filter here as well. All right, and here's the before and after. That looks great, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, here is our last picture. Let's go ahead and start editing. All right, so I went ahead and pasted what we had before kind of not really a fan. Um, so I'm actually gonna hop back over to this image and copy and paste these settings. And let's take a look at the before and after. Awesome, that's looking great. I'm really happy with that one. I'm actually quite happy with how these images turned out. I feel like the autofocus has done a very reliable job. Again, I'll be doing a full review of what I think about the Canon R5, but with my initial impressions of editing some of these photos, I'm quite happy with how these turned out. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I mentioned in my previous unboxing of the R5, I'm going to be putting the R5 through its paces, both for photography and videography. It's not a cheap camera, so I wanna give you guys my honest feedback and let you know if I think it's worth the investment. So if you like this video, go ahead and like it. Comment down below what other tests I should use with the Canon R5. I can say right off the bat, I have not experienced any overheating issues yet which is good, but again, I will be testing this a lot. So if there are things that you would like me to check out, please go ahead and tell me down in the comments below. Do not forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Hey!